Don't forget to like and subscribe or I'll come to your house and slap me bum. So we've come to an emergency call out. Um, in Oakhampton and there's been an electrical fire here. So uh, what we've got to do is do an emergency consumer unit change. The National Grid have been out. So there's a supply there. So the lady who owns this house owns this house as well. So you've got the cable that comes in there and it goes over to there as well. And there's a joint off there. And then this is the bit that's been cut off and they've just snapped that board around it there for now, temporarily. And then the fire brigade have been out, put the fire out. I'm so they disconnected it in the meantime. Well, I've got to come in and fix, fix everything and then they can come back and reconnect the supply. So there's the supply that they cut off. The joint. So that's been disconnected. And then it's got to be rerouted. Originally it went through the loft, but apparently regulations have changed with that now. So it has to come down the wall and go through straight to the meter position. So I've got to drill a hole for them to bring their cable in. So to get all this done inside, drill a hole, they'll come back, feed it through, put a new cutout on to get the power back on. So back inside. <coughs> So you can see where the armoured cable is coming in there, that was coming in from the loft upstairs, so coming down and into the cutout of the meter, doesn't look, cutout meter doesn't particularly look damaged. Yeah, so they look okay, but I'm assuming they're going to replace the cutout anyway, and that cable is going to be, after coming from below, come up to the new, <clears throat> the new position. This fuse board's not doing anything here. So it looks like the RCD has gone faulty. So you've got that main RCD there protecting the whole consumer unit because it was a it's an old rewirable fuse board that hasn't got any RCDs on. So instead of upgrading the fuse board, at some point someone's put this RCD on instead to kind of tick the boxes of needing RCD protection. The only problem is with that is if that RCD goes, the whole board goes off, and that's there's potentially a lot of load going through that as well. Dependent on the installation, but it's, you know, it, it did the job um, at the time. So either the RCD has failed or we've had loose connections inside the RCD. This could have been sat there for years, could have been sat there for 15 years, like connections being loose and eventually just becoming so loose that this happens. So this caught completely on fire has burnt the main incoming supply and then all the cables above there as you can see so the circuits in here it looks like there's been some rewiring done in the past or whatever but looking at how old this is this is going to need testing obviously after we do this and it but by the looks of what i've seen so far it doesn't it looks quite old and it doesn't like it's had any maintenance done on it for the past maybe 30 years so i don't think it would pass its testing as well when we do do that so yeah, this, this is what we need to, we've got to rip this out now, put some fireproof backboards back on, and then after joint, pull all these cables back that are damaged, joint them, and relocate everything to a new consumer unit. So I took all the meter off there now. I'm just waking my way through this board, lots of circuits doubled up, so you got like, five cables stuffed into one six amp breaker there I've just took this brown one out of that one so you got four 2.5s stuffed into that breaker so it looks like there's been lots of additions and alterations over the past 30 odd 5, 30, 5, 30 to 40 years and this is kind of rammed full way overcrowded right so that's all off just taking the cutout off now. I'm gonna rip that old supply cable out. Maybe take this piece of timber back off the wall because I've got some fireproof timber to go on. That might be a bit better now. I've got a light up there. You can see a bit clearer. So yeah, chopped that section of plaster off there so it was level with the bit. That timber was sunk. There's like a chipboard recessed into the plaster. 
So I took all that off because that was all crumbled and knackered anyway and the board was flapping off. So cut that square, cut the rest of the plaster square because the board only finished to about there or something. Um, yeah. So that's all cut out now. All the cables, that's the damaged joist there from the fire. It's probably going to be looking at. Cut all the plasterboard back. This is going to need jointing because it's come from a different direction. We had cables coming from that way, cables coming from this way, cables coming from the middle. So I've took all the middle ones back up, I've took all these ones upstairs and I've took all them ones upstairs. So they're all in this like wardrobe section. So that can be jointed upstairs and then brought back down to new cables down to the new consumer unit down here. So the lady was telling me before what happened when this all happened because the bathroom's through there. As I mentioned, this is an escape route, this corridor here, and there's a the front door. Yeah, so this is classed as an escape route. So if I was doing a condition report, for example, and there's a fuse board in here made out of plastic, um, I would say that the board doesn't meet current regulations because it's plastic, but then I'd also code it because it is in a fire escape as well. So it's even more dangerous, potentially more dangerous if it's in a fire escape as well as it's in a uh, combustible box. So, and this is a perfect example of why that, <clears throat> how it can be dangerous. So she was in here in the shower. By the sounds of it, someone's installed a six mil cable was on a 45 amp breaker. So that's probably like a 10 kilowatt shower. What they said is every time they put the shower on, the breaker was buzzing. So that isn't what caused the fire, but that could have easily caused a fire. This was the RCD. So there's multiple things in here which were issues. So yeah, she was in the shower. She said this was started going off like fireworks and was all on fire and arcing and banging. So she had to come out of here with nothing but a towel on, wet, past all the fire and all the fireworks. So that could have been potentially dangerous for her as well. So she could have been injured by the fire or she could have been electrocuted potentially. So this is why a metal enclosure is now required for fire regulation because if a fire starts inside the consumer unit, whereas this, in this case, it was an RCD outside of the consumer unit that caught on fire. But... This is just going to be, when I'm finished here now, it's just going to be a metal consumer unit. So if this was to happen again, the fire would be inside the consumer unit and it wouldn't spread outside. It would just be contained inside the consumer unit and wouldn't be lashing out like it was doing, sparking out, spitting fire out, and then potentially, you know, bare wires that people can get their hands on as well. So that's what that regulation is for anyway. This is a perfect example of why we use metal consumer units now and why you need to take consideration that things that are fire risk are in a fire escape. So she said she came out of the bathroom, went past that, ran upstairs because the flame, because the smoke was bellowing up, the fire was going up there and the smoke was going all up into the room upstairs. Ran upstairs, grabbed the cat, went outside, rang the fire brigade. So she sat outside in a towel, she's out here in a t in a towel, from out the shower with her holding a cat, stood in the rain, trying to ring the fire brigade. So that's a, like I said, a real life example of why this sort of stuff is dangerous, and then also why you maintain it as well. So as there's been no maintenance here for 30, 40 years, this sort of stuff is you're asking for it because things fail. People have done poor jobs of installing things, you know, so that's why you do your condition reports. You keep on top of it, you maintain it, you find the problems as they come and you fix them as you, as you go, rather than this sort of thing happening. So yeah, this is again another example why we do condition reports, why your insurance require you to do it every 10 or five years, depending on whatever the building is. Right, so I've, you saw before we've chased the plaster off the back, so battened on like rocky, uneven wall. Got this as flat as I can. So this is, sadly they only sell these sheets that the wholesaler in like 
basically the size of a big consumer unit, whatever that is. Um, so I cut them into like four bits, of, you know, a big sheet of that, a big six by four would have been good, but I, didn't, I couldn't get my hands on it. But anyway, that is a fireproof chipboard from the wholesaler. So that's got a backboard. Now this board's obviously a lot bigger than the other one that was in. So I've had to make more space over to the left here. That's why I've took, we've boarded it all the way across this time. And then the cables are gonna come in for the supply. And then we've got room for the main cutout or the electric meter, the cutout, tails out to the meter, tails out to the consumer unit, which uh, electricity uh, or national grid even are gonna come and do today. So now four o'clock. So I've still got to wire this, do all the joints upstairs. Hopefully they're gonna come out about seven. <coughs> and uh, I've got to drill a cable through, a cable. I've got to drill a hole through for them to fish their cable through. So we've got National Grid out here and they've come and replacing the cable at this house, which you've seen the other day, which we explained to you. So just gonna let you know what they're doing now. Uh, to sort it out. So what we have to do to isolate that property, there's a, a fuse at the bottom of that transformer pole there to obviously isolate the fuse, which took all the power off to all the houses in, the, in and around the surrounding area. Yep. We're then able to cut that cable and open it up, make sure everything, no, nothing was touching basically. Then able to re-energize there and put all the other houses back on. Um, obviously come back the following day when we needed to run a new cable, drill the hole, new cut out, um, and then rewire the meter and then over to the electrician then to, to sort out all the internal electrics. Can you just yep. just show us what, you, what you've had to do? So yeah, yesterday when, when we isolated the transformer pole we were then able to obviously cut that cable there and just yeah. put it into a box just to make it safe. Yeah. Um, we can then come back out of that box and clip a new cable down the, down the fascia, um, drill the hole in through the house. Um, and obviously that will then go into a brand new brand new cutout um, and into your meter, out your meter, into your RCD and distribution board. And that was going through the loft, that cable, originally? It was, yeah. That's now not regulations anymore? No, so what we've done is we've clipped that underneath the fascia now, yep. drilled a hole in the brickwork, mm. gone through the brickwork and in that way. Stop. So this is upstairs now, so that's where the burning came up from the consumer unit below. These are all the new cables that I've run in to replace the fire damaged ones. So these all need jointing. So there's a lot of cables coming from there, coming out the wall, coming from over there. All different lengths and short. Some of them still need some burn marks taken off. I've got to shorten them even more. Um, so, yeah, this is the next bit of it to get it hooked up to the existing wiring and get the power back on. Now, National Grid have done their bit. So, my idea was put a piece of 4x4 trunking across the back where all these come into. I'm going to put a couple of joint boxes on the floor in front of them and do all the jointing to try and keep it as neat as possible because it's a bit messy. So, I'll put a piece of 4x4 plastic trunking at the back where all the cables are entering these boxes. So all the cables that are, were coming from this side, I've put a joint box here. There's the new circuits jointing onto the existing circuits there, and I'll put a box up there. And then there's my new circuits again, which I've brought over to the other circuits that were all not long enough to all go to the same position. So we've got some that were long enough to get to here, some that were long enough to get to there, some that were long enough to get to there. And some have also been jointed downstairs in the ceiling, just a couple uh, in the plasterboard ceiling. So this is a kind of best solution I've come up with to keep it neat, because this is just like a kind of little voidy slash wardrobe thing. Uh, with some like water pipes just going straight across here anyway, so it's obviously not used this back bit. So yeah, we're gonna So that's all the circuits. I'm gonna weigh going. Join them in that adaptable box and that I'll have cover on 
way go joint them and then a uh, just a little box for that one as well and then everything will be jointed neatly i say as tidy as possible with this bearing in mind the situation that we're in here trunking's in joints are all done the boxes I've tried to keep it as tidy as I can. So that is a, I'd say that's a fairly well polished fiery turd. That's all up and running now. RCBOs. I've just got some testing to do. Label all the board, all that stuff. Test the full house now. So we've got new board, new backboard. Meet a new cutout. It's all been done today by National Grid. New tails. And all back on now. and neat all safe now all the old cables that were burnt removed and jointed it's hard to tell is that pipe in the way yes yeah, so this is upstairs above the consumer unit <laughs> 